Having introduced pipes, let's take a look at some more examples of pipes. So here what we are doing is we are taking the flights table and grouping it by destination. So what we want to do is to find certain summaries by destinations rather than for the entire table. So by dest is group by flights dest and the table we get is this. This is the by dest that we have printed out here and clearly it's telling us that it's grouped by dest it's showing that clearly and then it's showing you 105. So there are 105 different destinations to which flights went from these Newark, uh, three New York airports. Okay, so we already know what this means that there are 105 unique destinations. Right, so now what we want to do is to summarize the delay by destination. So we are saying delay summarize by dest count equals n. Now recall that the n function tells you how many rows are there and when applied in the context of a grouped table it's going to tell you how many elements are there in that particular group. Okay, so summarize by dest count equals n and distance equals mean of distance. Right, so that is you've got several destinations and for each destination many flights have flown so what we are trying to do is to find out the mean distance to each of the destinations. Right? Now why do you say mean distance? Isn't there only one distance from, uh, from a given origin to a destination? Well that is true but here we are talking about three different airports Newark, JFK, LaGuardia and more importantly the flights whenever they fly they may take slightly different routes depending upon weather conditions, right? right? It's uh, air traffic control routes the flights and actually the flights even though they're flying from one point to another point they may take different routes, right? So we are trying to find out for each destination what is the distance that is flown and then we want to calculate delay as the mean of the arrival delay, right? So what we'll get is by destination for every destination you're going to get the count that is how many flights flew to that destination. You're going to get the distance which is what is the distance to that destination and then you're going to get the average delay which is what is the average delay of uh, average arrival delay of flights that went to that particular destination. Okay. So now we are saying delay is filter delay. So this whole thing is called delay. right? This table, the result of all of this is called delay and here we are filtering it by taking only those groups or those destinations that had at least 20 flights in fact that had more than 20 flights and we are also eliminating the Honolulu as a destination okay the reason is the distance is so so much different than the distance to the other locations and we are going to be shortly plotting the data so we want to remove that Honolulu data okay so destination not equals Honolulu Okay, now we are going to plot it, right? I'm saying ggplot data equals delay, which is this one, right? It consists of uh, this, but filtered by n greater than 20, right? And what we are trying to do is to see if the delay has anything to do with the distance, right? So we are saying put the distance on the x axis, put the delay on the y axis. Delay, of course, is the average delay, really, right? and then we are doing geom point which is a scatter plot and we want to make the size of the point proportional to how many flights are there for that particular destination okay and alpha equals one third because some of the points will overlap we want to put a level of transparency okay so the question is is the delay dependent on the distance okay in fact it does seem so right it seems that as the distance increases the delay sort of comes down slightly. Okay, The reason might be that for short flights there isn't much time to make up for any delays that may have occurred during the start. Right, Most of the time or almost all of the time delays happen because of departure delays. Something happens the flight delay uh, is delayed in departure and then of course it's also delayed on arrival but on flights which are very long duration flights there is some opportunity to make up some time whereas on a short flight you don't really have any opportunity to make up and clearly that is what this is showing. This is showing you that uh, for longer flights the average delay 
is actually somewhat lower. Okay. And of course, you can see that uh, the, the larger circles are all on the smaller flight side, okay, which means there are more flights to places that are reasonably close than to places that are really far away, okay, direct flights. Obviously, there might be a lot of connecting flights, but here we are talking about direct flights. Okay, and then we did a geom smooth to print this line, right? Instead of SE, uh, instead of if, if, instead of getting this smooth lowest line, if we wanted the regression line, we could have said method equals LM, and then we would have got the straight regression line, that in fact more clearly shows the diff, the reducing delay with distance. Okay, so this is an example of the kind of thing that we'll be doing all the time. We'll take a data set, okay, do some processing on it all kinds of processing on it and then perform some visualization on that okay in this example we have chosen to do it step by step by creating separate variables but you could do all of this in one single uh, pop like this here right so you say delays flights group by destination summarize count equals n distance is this okay and then filter uh, filter the flight by count greater than 20 and destination not equal to Hawaii and then you can take delays and pass it on to uh, to ggplot or alternately you can just pipe this whole thing to ggplot as well okay so that's what we are showing you here doing all of that in one go flights group it by destination summarize find the count find the distance find the delay filter it pass it on to ggplot and plot the whole thing okay so this shows you everything that we did earlier to get that particular plot and this is very representative of the kind of things we'll be doing with uh, with pipes okay so you, lots of different operations now if you wrote all of this separately by creating lots of temporary variables or combining the functions and so on it would be horrendously difficult to understand that whereas this makes it really easy to understand Let's take a look at this here. So we're taking flights, group by year, month, day. We've done this before, grouping by multiple columns. And uh, then we are saying summarize, right? So we are doing the grouping and summarizing. Summarize mean equals mean departure delay, right? So what you're going to get here is for every year, month, day combination, you're going to get the mean departure delay. And that's what you're seeing here. Okay, so clearly there are 355 more rows, 10 are being shown, 365, perfect. So, but the next round of grouping, it says that the resultant summarized table is grouped by year and month. Okay, but it doesn't tell us how many year-month combinations are actually there. I don't know why it doesn't do that, but it doesn't, right? That's why it's just got an interrogation question mark out there. Okay, that's just how it works. So when you're unfurling the groups, Right, when you do one level of summarization, if there is still some level of summarization left, it doesn't tell us how many different values are actually there. Okay, so now let's do some operations on uh, cancelled flights. Right, so earlier what we got, if you saw the result of this, right, right, you're noticing that all of these mean uh, delays are NA. Okay, that is because there are many departure delays which are NA. Okay, that is because again some of the flights may be cancelled and for cancelled flights obviously there is no departure delay so the mean comes out as NA. So one thing you could do is to of course do NA.RM equals true or alternately you can remove the cancelled flights. So let's just look at the op, uh, later approach. Right, so I'm saying flights filter ease.NA departure not of ease dot na departure delay in other words departure delay is not na and arrival delay is also not na right because if the departure delay is na obviously arrival delay is also going to be na right but we just want to say define a flight as a cancel flight if its departure delay and arrival delay are na right so its departure delay is not na and arrival delay is not NA. In that case, the flight is a cancelled flight. So we can then say group by year, month, day, summarize mean. Now we don't have to do NA.RM equals true because we already removed NAs by filtering. So that's just one way of doing it. 
right? So alternately, we could have just said mean departure delay comma na dot rm equals true. Right? If you want to view the flights table in uh, dplyr, you can just say flights view with an uppercase v. Then you'll be able to see it in our studio. Okay. Now sometimes, as I've already pointed out, we perform operations on data frames or tables by using the square bracket, right? So you could do df double square brackets x, which is to get the column whose name is x, or df double the square bracket 1 to get the contents of the first column and so on. Okay, so when you're performing operations like dollar or square bracket, then you can use the dot as I already showed you earlier, right? So df pipe to dot dollar x is the same as df dollar x or df pipe to dot square bracket square bracket x is the same as uh, df square bracket x. Okay, so this second operation is exactly same as this. Okay, so the special placeholder dot is used when working with pipes and using subsetting by do dollar or square bracket. And we've already seen examples of this. Okay, so you, you're doing n distinct diamonds dollar carat is the same as of course diamonds uh, dot cat dollar carat we have seen this before and then pipe it to n distinct right because when you say diamonds dollar carat what you're really doing here is piping diamonds to the dot dollar carat operation okay but notice that you cannot write the above as diamonds n distinct dot dollar carat cannot do this right that is because the first argument to n distinct is supposed to be the vector that you're operating on. In this case, the first argument is diamonds itself, right? Because implicitly coming on the pipe is diamonds. That becomes the first argument. So in this case, this is actually the same as if you wrote n distinct diamonds comma dot dollar carat, which is obviously